Hog for the Job, Ira's Path from Service Dog to Guide Dog, by Dorothy Hinshaw Patton, photographs by William Munoz. Ira was born on Shy Bear Farm in Montana, along with his sister Ivy and his brother Ike. Like all newborn puppies, the three young golden retrievers have closed eyes, velvety ears, and very soft fur. But unlike most puppies, these three were born for a special purpose. By the time they are two years old, each is expected to have become a service dog, helping a person who has difficulty moving around on his or her own to lead a fuller life. Ira, Ivy, and Ike are part of Possibilities, canine partners for people with disabilities. Brea, the puppy's mother, and Kathleen Decker, Possibilities' foster puppy coordinator, take good care of the puppies. They grow bigger and stronger. Their eyes and ears open so they can take in the world around them. Soon, they are romping and playing together, getting bolder each day. Kathleen begins to feed them puppy food when they are four weeks old. By the age of six weeks, they no longer need their mother's milk. Soon, it will be time to leave home. Before they can help people with disabilities, service dogs need to learn to deal confidently with the world and whatever it might present to them. Loud noises, smelly buses, crowds of people. Each puppy goes to live with a special person called a foster puppy raiser. The puppy becomes a member of the family where it gets plenty of love, attention, and praise as the puppy raiser introduces it to the world. When they are about eight weeks old, Ira, Ivy, and Ike meet their puppy raisers. Ira goes home with Sandy Welch, a sixth grade teacher in Lolo, Montana. Sandy already has her own beautiful golden retriever, Laddie Grizz. Laddie and Ira quickly become friends. Kathleen visits Ira and Sandy a month later. She wants to see how Ira is doing and check on his service dog skills. One of the most important tasks a service dog performs is retrieving things such as dropped keys. Sandy has already been working on this skill with Ira, so Kathleen throws her keys and tells Ira to fetch them. He runs over, picks them up in his mouth, and brings them back to Kathleen. Good news! Ira is already on his way to becoming a service dog. All along, the puppy raisers meet as a group to learn how to teach the young dogs what they need to know. The puppies have to learn how to come or to sit on command and how to walk at heel on a leash. Kathleen also shows them how to teach the puppies to press a wheelchair access sign with their paw. The symbol appears on buttons that open doors automatically when pressed. Kathleen uses a plastic lid attached to a stick with a strip of cloth. On the lid is the wheelchair access sign. She puts a dog treat on the deck and covers it with the lid. One by one, the puppies sniff and push the lid with their noses, trying to get at the treat. But only when they scratch at it with a foot does Kathleen lift the stick so the puppy is rewarded. Ivy tries to figure out how to get at the treat under the plastic lid. Ira gets off the bus. Next, the group goes to the bus station. The bus company loans possibilities, a, po a bus, and a driver. The puppies practice getting on and off over and over again. They ride around town and learn to stay calm on the bus as it stops and starts. By the end of the day, riding the bus has become as natural as a trip in the car. The puppy raisers take the dogs wherever they can, such as, a, such as to sporting events and the farmer's market. Every two weeks, the group meets at a different place somewhere in town. At the mall, the puppies learn not to be distracted at the pet store or by the crowds of people walking by. They also practice pushing the button with the wheelchair sign to open the door. At the university, they learn how to pull open a door using a tug made of rope tied to the knob. At the library, they learn to lie quietly under the table while the puppy raisers look through books. They also learn how to enter the elevator correctly, walking right beside the puppy raiser instead of going in front or behind. It would be dangerous if the elevator door closed on the leash. Sandy brings Ira to her classroom two days a week. She explains to her students the importance of training Ira correctly. Ira needs to learn to lie down by himself and stay there, even if he gets bored, she says. You have to leave him alone, even if he wants to be petted so he doesn't get distracted from his job. You can also help teach the other children not to pet a service dog in training. Ira has his own corner of the room, where he must lie quietly on his rug. 
If he gets up and wanders around, Sandy says in a firm voice, rug. Then she tells Ira to sit, lie down, or stay. He must also learn to always stay close to the person he is helping. When Sandy and the students work with Ira, they form a circle and bring Ira into the center. Then one of the children calls him. He knows he'll get a treat if he lays his head in the child's lap. The children take turns calling him, helping him learn to come reliably every time he is called. Then they help teach him to use his nose to push a light switch, another important job for a service dog to learn. Ira, Ira learns to come when he is called. It takes a lot of practice for Ira to learn to flip a light switch with his nose instead of his mouth. Ira goes all over the school, so he gets used to noisy places like the cafeteria and the gym during pep rallies. Sandy also takes him to other classrooms and tells the other students about service dogs. As summer approaches, Sandy's students must say goodbye to Ira. Each child gets a chance to say what having Ira in the classroom meant to her or him. I feel special because I got to help train Ira, says one. I never liked dogs before Ira came, but now I like having him around, confesses another. Having Ira in the classroom has made me feel beyond wonderful, says a third. To reward the children for their help, Sandy arranges a field trip to Shy Bear Farm. The students take turns making dog toys, working on scrapbooks for Ira's new companion, touring the farm, and playing with the six-week-old puppies. They also get to say one last goodbye to Ira. As summer starts, it's time for Ira to leave Sandy and go for more detailed service dog training. But his assigned training facility isn't ready yet. Glenn Martin, director of possibilities, can't find another service dog group that can use Ira. Everyone worries. What will happen? Can Ira learn a new career? Though they rarely take dogs raised and trained elsewhere, Guide Dogs for the Blind in San Rafael, California steps in. Ira has lots of confidence, which is very important in a guide dog, so we'll give Ira a chance, says their coordinator, but we'll have to change his name. Each dog we train has a different name, and we already have one called Ira. We'll just change the spelling to Ira, so he won't have to learn a new name. Now Ira needs to learn a whole new set of skills, which takes four to five months. He has to get used to wearing a guide dog harness. Trainer Stacy Burrow helps him learn many things such as stopping at street corners and crossing only when the way is clear. The most important thing a guide dog must learn is intelligent disobedience. Knowing when to disobey can enable a guide dog to save its owner's life. For example, if the blind person tells the dog to go forward when there's a car running a red light, the dog must refuse to obey. Ira is smart. He passes the program with flying colors. Stacy works with Ira on the Guide Dogs for the Blind campus. After training, Ira is paired with Don Simonson, a piano tuner who had already retired two guide dogs after they got too old to work. Ira and Don work together for three weeks in San Rafael, learning to be a team. Then it's time to graduate. Sandy comes from Montana for the graduation. She gets to see Ira and meet Don before the ceremony. Ira and Sandy are delighted to be together again, but Ira clearly knows his place is now with Don. During the graduation ceremony, Don's name is announced when his turn comes. Sandy hands Ira over to Don. Ira is Don's dog now, and the two will be loving, giving partners. Sandy will miss Ira, but she is happy that he has found a home with someone like Don. At home in Kennewick, Washington, Don and Ira continue to learn to work together. Grayson, Don's retired guide dog, also lives with them. Grayson and Ira become fast friends, playing together just like Ira and Laddie did. Stacy, Sandy, and Ira stand by as Don speaks at the graduation. Joey escorts Don and Ira to the stage for their big moment. When Don goes to work, Ira guides him. Once they enter the room with the piano, Don says, Ira, find the piano, and Ira leads him to it. Then Don gets to work and Ira lies down nearby, waiting patiently as he learned to do in Sandy's classroom. He is there for Don whenever he is needed. I'm so glad Ira and I found each other, Don says. He's just the right dog for me. Sandy and Don become friends, and as a surprise, Sandy invites Don to the 8th grade graduation of the children who helped train Ira. 
Don's wife, Robbie, drives their motorhome to Montana for the graduation. After Sandy talks to the audience about Ira and Don, she shows a movie of their graduation from Guide Dogs for the Blind. Then she announces that Don and Ira are in the auditorium, and Joey, Ira's favorite student, escorts them to the stage. The surprised students are delighted to see the results of their hard work and the hard work of so many others. Their own canine student, Ira, is now a working guide dog.